another Fiction Friday. Can you believe it? Today, we're reading Chapter 15 in our ongoing book, Master Frisky by Clarence Hawks. We're skipping Chapter 14 because, while it's not too sad, the content is a little rough. Rough, get it? Because we're dogs and we rough a lot. Ha! Huh. I crack myself up sometimes. If you want to read along, the link to the ebook is in the description below. Now, let's get started! Chapter 15, Old Spot and Master Frisky. The strangest of all the friendships among the dogs was that of Old Spot and Master Frisky. Spot was an aged hound, as deaf as a post, and partly blind. He was a homely old fellow, with long drooping ears, a solemn expression, and a tail that curled over his back in a perfect circle. It was he who taught Master Frisky mice hunting and frog hunting, and Frisky, in time, learned of the old hound most of that woodcraft that he had patiently gathered in many years. One morning I went to the garden for some vegetables, and seeing Spot and Master Frisky in the orchard, paused to find out what they were up to. Old Spot was standing perfectly still in the grass, upon all fours, as a dog usually stands. But Master Frisky was standing on his hind legs, resting his forepaws upon Spot's shoulder, looking intently now in this direction and now in that. Presently, he gave a sharp bark, and the two dogs started through the grass running at the top of their speed, Frisky leading. But soon they stopped, and after nosing around for a minute, seemed to find what they were after, and then lay down together. I walked quickly to them and saw that Old Spot was eating a field mouse. Frisky did not like them at first, but he soon learned to. When the mouse had been eaten, they took their station as before to watch the grass, until some movement in it should tell them that a mouse was stirring. Quite frequently they were fooled, for on going to the place where the grass had stirred, they would find a hop toad or a snake, or nothing but a grasshopper. Frog hunting was in a long time a mystery to me. I would see Frisky and Old Spot go off in the morning and perhaps not return until night. But when they did come back, they were covered with mud and very tired. One day I took my telescope and followed at a distance, determined to find out, if possible, what they could find to do in the swamps. They started straight for a distant swamp, Spot leading, until they came to a ditch. Here they lay down in the grass and looked intently into the reeds and lily pads that I knew fringed the edge of the ditch. Suddenly Frisky gave his short, sharp bark that even deaf old Spot could hear, and both dogs dove into the water, and when they came out, Spot was holding a bullfrog by the hind leg. My astonishment was too great for words, but it was still greater when, after offering him to Master Frisky, Old Spot lay down in the grass and began munching down the poor frog. I had seen enough and so returned home, thinking, as I went, of the manner in which the big fish eat the little ones in this hungry world. Dogs have almost as many kinds of outdoor games as children, and it is very interesting to watch them at these sports. Spot was too old and stiff to take an active part in any of the running and jumping games, but he always attended, and sometimes acted as referee. But he liked best to be a spectator, that he might cheer for his friend, Master Frisky, when he was lucky enough to beat. When Frisky won the high jump over the front gate, Spot's joy knew no bounds, and he tore about like a wild dog, barking in his hoarse voice. In the winter, when there is a hard crust, it is a great sport for the dogs to play tag. Then you will see them racing about like mad. When the dog that is tagging gets near enough to put his nose on the other dog's back, he gives a short bark, and then the dog that is touched must tag until he can touch another in the same manner. When there is soft snow, they play Keep the Path, a game similar to children's fox and geese. One of the older dogs marks out a runway of a curious pattern, and they all run in it, one of the number chasing. It is against the rules to step out of the path, and when a dog is caught, he must chase until he catches another. In the running games, none of the others equaled Tom Hatch, the sheriff, who was a lank greyhound, 
and the swiftest dog that I had ever seen. If you have never observed the dogs, do so sometime in the winter and watch them play these games, and you will be surprised to see them playing the same games day after day with as much interest as children. Wow, there is so much fun in this chapter. I love hearing about Master Frisky and his dog friends playing games. I don't play all the games that Frisky does, especially the ones about grabbing mice and bullfrogs. My mommy doesn't let me do things like that. But it's still fun to learn about what other dogs do. I have a doggy cousin who is nearly blind and deaf, just like old Spot. His name is Buddy, and I visited him in the Poconos last month. I even sang a song about my visit there, called Here I Go to the Poconos. It was great fun playing with him and learning from him. He is very old, unlike me, and I can learn many things from him. Like how to bark at passing cars, how to bark at passing people, all of the barking. I also love to play in snow like Master Frisky does in this chapter. It hasn't snowed in a long time, though, many months. But Mommy tells me that winter is just right around the corner again. I can't wait. I look all snazzy in my winter coat. Though I probably need a bigger one this year. I was just a small puppy last winter. And my coat probably doesn't fit me anymore. But soft, fluffy snow is so much fun to run around in. Bury things in and play fetch in. The only downside is that I get lots of snowballs stuck on my fur. And then Mommy needs to give me a warm bath to melt them off. I hate baths, even when they're for my own good. Well, that's all the story I have for you today. We're starting to reach the end of Master Frisky. Only two chapters left. Don't worry, I have another doggy story to read when we're done with Master Frisky. These Fiction Fridays are so much fun that we have to keep them going. I love sharing stories with you. So be sure to come back next week for another chapter and join me on Monday for another Music Monday song. Thanks for hanging out with me today.